This is a Figma prototype with video. Let's learn how to make it. Welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. If you're new here, I make bite-sized Figma tutorials to help you learn new skills. Feeling hungry for more? Subscribe to enjoy the buffet. Okay, intro Chris, calm down. Let's make this prototype. We're starting with this mock. You can grab the starter file in the description if you'd like. The first thing to understand is how to create a video fill. With an object selected, you can move to the fill panel and click this little video icon. From there, you can select your video. Let's look at another way to do that. There's another page in this file called videos. Head to that page, select the burger image, and press the shortcut option command C to copy properties, which includes the video fill. Or you can right click, hover over copy paste as, and click copy properties. Then go back to the demo page, click the header again, and use the shortcut option command V to paste properties. I got all these videos from pexels.com and you can find links to them in the description. Now that we have this video in our header, let's preview the prototype. Select the frame and press shift spacebar to open a preview window. There we go. But what if you don't want the video to autoplay? Go into prototype mode and select the video. You'll see some options to toggle autoplay, looping, or sound. We'll stick with autoplay for now and let the video loop. There is no sound. All right, let's look at the step list that I already designed. It has a placeholder video and some text already. If we preview this, you can see that the videos play on hover and remember where they were when they stop hovering. Off to the side here, I have a couple components, a button, which we'll use later, and a video thumbnail. Switch into prototype mode, and you'll see that we already have interactions here. The default state transitions to the larger state while hovering. Open the interaction details, and we can see that the default state has autoplay off and the hover state has it on. Each of these interactions is also set to Smart Animate. Because of this, the video remembers its playback between transitions. The last variant is set to autoplay and has some effects because we're going to use it for an overlay later. Now we can update the second and third instance of this video component with their own videos. I'll go to the video page again, copy properties on the second video, and paste it back in our second instance. I skipped ahead and I've done the same for the third video. Let's preview the prototype now. Even though we replaced the video fill, the interaction from the main component holds up. Pretty neat. Next up, let's create the overlay interaction for the video thumbnails. We want to open them full size when the thumbnail is clicked. Duplicate our current frame. Now select the first video. Take a look at the layers panel. This won't always be true, but for the interaction I was going after here, the thumbnails needed to be absolute positioned and separate from the content. In a semantic world, they would be in the same container, but hey, this is a prototype. If you remember from earlier, the default instance of this doesn't autoplay. Move to the properties panel and change the state to overlay. This happens to also have a big drop shadow that makes a dark background behind the video. Let's resize this so it fills the frame. Move to the upper right and switch into prototype mode. Select the first video thumbnail in the first frame and drag a connection to the second frame. Switch the animation to smart animate. Select the second frame and drag a handle back to the first frame. Make sure this is also set to Smart Animate. Preview the prototype and our video thumbnail plays on hover and then we can click it to have it grow into full size, all while remembering the play position of the video. As you can see, I've skipped ahead a bit and already set up the connection in the other two videos, so we can click on any of them. I think it would be cool if at the end of the video, a button popped up that let me move to the next step. Remember that button component from earlier? We'll take an instance of that component and paste it into all three frames. Multi-edit lets us move it around in all the frames at one time. Center it up. Videos have some special interaction states to take advantage of, like making something happen at the end of the video. First step, open the variables menu. With nothing selected, move to the upper right of the design panel and click local variables. This will open the variables dialog. If you want to learn more about using variables and prototypes, I've got a playlist linked at the end of this video. Create a Boolean variable and name it Show Button. Select all the buttons and move over to the Appearance section on the right. Right click on the eyeball icon and select our new variable from the list. That variable is now assigned to the visibility of the buttons. In prototype mode, connect the first button to the second frame and the second button to the third frame. Now they'll progress when clicked. Back in the Variables dialog, turn the Show Button variable to false. All the buttons should be hidden now. Next. Click on our first video overlay. You can select the video layer directly by holding down Command and clicking the nested element. Switch into prototype mode, 
and add a new interaction by clicking the little plus icon next to the interaction's heading. For the trigger, select When Video Ends. If we wanted something to happen at a specific time, we could choose When Video Hits. Our action should be Set Variable, and then we want to set the Show Button variable to True. Preview the prototype and click on the first video. Wait a second for it to get to the end. Boom! Button. Click it, and oh, the second video still has the button. Well, we need to also change our show button variable back to false every time the button is clicked. Select the first button and open the interaction details menu. Click the plus icon to add a new interaction. Choose set variable and change show button variable to false. Drag this new interaction to the top of the list so it happens first. Click preview one more time. At the end of the first video, when we click the button, it will go back to false and let the next video play. When that video hits the end, it will trigger back to true. That's how to use video in Figma prototypes. I hope this Figma Byte helps you vamp up visuals with video. Thanks for watching.